uh, as we have discussed over the past few weeks, we wanted to bring together the, the men of Christ and to start to have fellowship with one another and start to get to know one another and to build relationships so we can move, move forward as men in Pembrokeshire and in our town and throughout Wales, really. And uh, we can just serve the Lord in all that he's called us to do and uh, use our strengths and uh, even strengthen one another in our times of need and things like that. So uh, what we've uh, thought about doing is to get to know one another and as uh, the weeks go on, individually we'll um, either give a testimony or a life verse or, or something that God has given you to speak uh, in the coming weeks so everybody will get a a chance to share and get to know one another and uh, at the end what we can, or as we move on we can send in prayer requests whatever they may be so we can pray for one another and pray for situations that we find that we need uh, to lift each other up in and to strengthen one another uh, an interesting thing i was reading the other day was about uh, it's in a book we had but uh, we had when we went to america it's called taking it back and it's, it's it talks about men taking back the the stance that god prepared for them that they should lead in things and not become relaxed in things that we should be strong in things that we should fight for things and the story the first story i read was about george foreman and uh, all the critics and all the things when he was uh, at the age, I think it was uh, 43, that he wanted to get back in the ring because he, he felt that like God had told him to do it because he'd lost everything else. Although he was working for the Lord and things like that. And the one thing the Lord said that to get back in there and uh, he would sustain him through the battle. And uh, the interesting thing was that he had to take some punches and they hurt, punches hurt, and when you're older, they hurt even more. But the Lord said, I will sustain you. And at a point, you will break through. So he, although all the other people would say he would end up in hospital, he'd end up in mental home, things and all like this. He took his strength from the Lord and he did it. And he did what he did to invest in what God had given him a vision for, was to work with young people and children and things like that. So, there's a battle going on in life that we have to go through and we know in the things that we live in today that there's a big battle out there to pull men down and to keep us quiet and not to speak out but i just want to say that we need to be strong and we need to fight it and we need to speak what god's word says not what we think or what's a good idea but what god actually what god's word says so over the next couple of weeks, we just want to get to know one another and share and help each other because we can't do anything on our own. We know we have God with us, but if we have one another as well, and if we have a friend that can help us along, then we know, always know we've had a friend to speak into our life what God's purpose is for us. So we, we need to strengthen one another and stand with one another. We don't need to be isolated. So we're going to share over the next couple of weeks. Adam's going to do the first one tonight and then next week uh, John will do it, John DL, and then we'll carry on and uh, I'll contact people as, as they go along. There's no uh, pressure for anybody to do anything if they don't want to do it, but you know, we just want to get to know each other and hopefully when this lifts we can get back together and have a good breakfast. But I just want to read one uh, portion of scripture from Hebrews 10. And it's just this, it's just, let us hold fast the confession, the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as it is a manner of some but exhorting one another, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. 
So I'll just pray and open in prayer and then I'll hand over to Adam. And if there's any prayer requests at the end, if you indicate at the end, just wave or something like that. And then Peter can uh, open the mic up for you to speak or ask for prayer or any questions at the end either. I'm sure Adam be open to questions. So we just open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night and we thank you that we can come together through this, uh, the wonderful work of te technology, Lord. But we know that we're two or more are gathered in your name. So there you are in the midst. So Father, we thank you that you are in the midst of us today. And we ask you to lead us and guide us. And we ask you to speak into our hearts, Lord, that which we need to receive tonight. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we'll add, hand over to Adam. Hey, good evening, guys. Um, so can, can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, so we weren't, I wasn't quite sure who would be on tonight. Um, and we talked about, I talked about doing other stuff, but I thought, you know, if I put my full testimony out there, then we all, you know, that's me. That's me down to the bone. You know where I've been and you know where I'm going. Um, and this kind of honesty, I think, as men is what we need. Um, so that's why some of you have heard it and I'm kind of not apologising, so it's probably always worth it looking back. But it's just kind of important that sometimes we have this facade of, of to the to, to the people around us and I think it's really difficult then to engage with us if that's what you think um let me just read uh 2 timothy uh chapter 1 verses 8 and 9 therefore not do not be ashamed of the testimony of our lord nor of me as prisoner but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of god who has saved us and called us with holy calling not according to our own works but according to his own purpose and grace which is given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Um, most of you know, I suppose, that me and Kath have been married for 23 years, or we've been together for 23 years. We met in university. Uh, so kind of, we were 19 when we met. Um, we've got two stunning, beautiful, Teenage girls, Bernie and Pops. Um, I was lucky um, when we had the girls originally. I was really lucky and fortunate to be a house husband with them for five years. I left my work and took over as Kath went back to work straight away. Um, professionally, both of us have been in education of one instance to another for 20 years. Um, the reason I'm saying the next bit is so we have an understanding of, of kind of the person I am, I suppose. So for since 2007, I've run and set up GreenLinks, which started with four people. We now deliver, well, this year will be 70,000 hours of education and training to uh, disaffected kids and kind of the wider community. And this is really important because the outside world saw us as... as successful and i've just done my testimony the other day you know that glossy we did stuff and we had things uh, and that's I, I think uh really importantly as far as people saw from the outside um professionally we were good we were helping people i was being a pretty reasonable dad and a dutiful husband um i'm not sure Door now, and I've, I've got this on my notes. I'm not sure what dutiful means anymore. Um, but at the time, I'd have said I was being a dutiful husband, and I was essentially not a bad person. And for more intents and purposes, I was pretty happy and confident, and uh, and doing pretty pretty well in my life, I suppose. Um, but inwardly, and I say this every time, inwardly, I was absolutely broken down. Um, I was just a miserable, sad person. And this is where, you know, that facade is really important that we, we lay ourselves bare now because that's what everyone saw. That happy person was inside, I was broken. And I was, in a response to this, I was completely living in the world around us. 
I was um, I was out, I was drinking, I was doing all those things we shouldn't do as men. And all of my actions I contextualized and I justified. So because my context of my life was poor, I could justify any of my behaviors really simply. I never had to worry about guilt. I just went, life is poor, I can do what I like. Um, and my life just revolved really through work, being a dad and and kind of myself. Um, I think, you know, this is an opportunity when we look at this, all of us can do this. All of us can justify and contextualize where we are and why we do it. Whether it's now we're in lockdown and we can eat loads of pies or drink loads of wine or whatever because we can, it's fine. We, we've, the context allows us to justify it or not. But I think this is, I was there, I was fit, I'm right, I'm first, and I was entitled. And that was my attitude for oh, 10 years plus, maybe. Um, and then it all ended in, in 2017. We completely and utterly ran aground and we shattered. Um, I ended up really walking away from absolutely everything. Work, marriage, family, house. Um, I struggled massively. As some of you know, with the relationships with my own children, uh, the police were involved, uh, self-harm, suicide talk and on the edge of that and it's been a really traumatic really difficult few um kind of really difficult time um the result of this when it all went wrong for us both and everything came out both kat and i were just left hollered and fatigued we were literally at the time some of you remember we were just physically and emotionally broken and damaged um and you know the sad thing is that damage doesn't uh, confine itself does it to me and Kat that damage goes to our children our brothers our sisters our mums and our dads and our friends all of us are impacted on our, by, our, by our actions and then you know so we were going through absolute murder it was horrendous and then it just God revealed his plan and this is the moment where you have to believe in god you just have to believe jesus has a plan for, for me and for you guys because john dl who's down here at the bottom left of my screen who you know has been a friend for many years on and off uh, but mostly his wife is a good friend of ours or mine and um, john dl just ended up in my life so he literally left some like kurdistan or pakistan or Azerbaijan or somewhere building like huge complexes and he ended up coming and building our wooden toilet block in work really randomly and bearing in mind he's gone from our toilet block to Richard Branson's island in NECA to build his multi-million pound mansion so our 20,000 pound toilet block was a kind of a weird juxtaposition that God has obviously intended for John to be in um, so John came to work for me on, on this contract and for three months he was aware of what was going on obviously and for three months every morning every lunch and every after work he told me i had to go to church he literally said i have to go to church i have to go to church and this is i mean i didn't know that john was even a christian until this point you know it, it was a weird meeting um in the end i said i'd go i said i said uh, to kath let's go we didn't have anything else to lose and I wanted to prove to John it was a waste of time. Um, and we went and to the Holy Spirit in Milford Haven. And do you know what? Since then, my life has turned around. That night was the first night I have probably felt any kind of or semblance, semblance of peace in a decade. It was for a person who is absolutely categorically not Christian at the time, to turn up and leave a church after two hours and just find my heart was better. It was, it was, oh, it was just amazing. Um, and then since then, I, it was a, just a constant, probably a month of prayers being instantly answered, prayers just answered, uh, Bible meetings that were just awesome and this is like just one after the other for a month that's all i had i should think um and within within no time really my 
physical appearance changed. I was just, you know, I could just look in the mirror and think, oh, look, look, I, I look like I wanted to. My eyes were alive and I just felt in myself better. And just that whole time, that whole, I mean, we had a disaster, me and Kath. And the whole time, our family and our friends never, ever judged us. No one ever judged us. Everyone had supported us. And our church family, which you've got to remember was new at the time, our church family literally held us up and supported us. They came and found me when I disappeared off the radar. And I mean physically disappeared off the radar. Someone, Stevie, Josh, they're all here, would, would find me. They would find me and lead me back to my home where I should be with my family. Um, and I think probably around that time, they were, they were saving me. Every, every week, someone was picking me up. And then in, in 2018, on July, we were baptised together in Boston Quarry, which, is, which was it's a difficult one. It's a seminal moment, but also it was the start of our journey. It wasn't like it was the start of our moment together. Um, and since then, our girls are finding their own way to God. Our marriage is rooted in God's foundation. We've organised men's events, men's conferences. I've preached a couple of sermons. I go to weekly Bible study, which is different now because I don't just turn up, I'm learning and I, I just thoroughly enjoy understanding the word. We've done an alpha course. And it's weird, the more I do for God, the more everything else in my life takes, takes off. You know, my, my work is, is better, it's easier, it's more successful the more I hand over to God. Kath has become an absolute anchor for our family in, both, in faith. She has just become a rock. Now, we've had blips on this. You know, I did my sermon the other day and I've had a real struggle for three years. And, and again, now, I mean, that's the second one I did last week, but it's... God has always put men in our place. And this is what I'm going to leave you with on this kind of, for all of you, really. Just make sure we're not justifying our actions and putting them in context to the world around us. The world is going to break us and you and leave us broken. It won't give us any solutions and it will literally abandon us. But Jesus and prayer will give you new life not a plaster, it will breathe new life into you. He will give us peace and he will also give us power to change. He will surround you with Christian men when we're not strong enough to hold ourselves up. He never condemns us. I said the other day, he might test us, but he will not break you. And his grace is constantly eternal. And that, guys, is my testimony, which changes all of the time and gets better. The bad stuff gets smaller and the good stuff gets bigger. Any questions, anyone wants to ask anything, please do so. That was very good. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> was, uh... It uh, seems like a lifetime ago to me, you know, that um, had that small bit of drama in your life. And it's, it's great to see you both uh, still in the fight. And um, I, I, had, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, sitting with a guy who was, um, he owned a pharmaceutical company in the B, uh, he, before he retired. He's a very wealthy guy when I was working in the BVI. And uh, he hired Muhammad Ali years ago to do... Um, a uh, motivational talk to his sales team who did, uh, they did all, he used to phone around, you know, to sell the, the, the stuff he was doing, you know, and um, Muhammad Ali stood up in front, uh, they, they, he came to his company, obviously you can imagine the cost of hiring Muhammad Ali at the time when, when he was, uh, he hadn't long retired and he was still, still, um, you know, uh, quick, quick thinking as he always was. And um, Muhammad Ali, one of the last things he said to the team was, he said when he was fighting, um, Joe Frazier, he said, um, but years ago they used to do 14 rounds. And uh, he said, in the, I think it was the 13th round, he said he had um, nothing left to give, nothing at all. 
he said he was absolutely spent out. And if you if you're a boxing fan, there's actually a photo of Valley in on the round. His eyes are wide, you know, when someone is really about to to go, his eyes were wide. And uh, his trainer said to him, Ali, you just got to get up and go one more round. He said, trust me. And he said, I can't, I, I can't move. You know, he said, this is before they, um, they used to make sure you had, you were hydrated well. This is when they used to just take water and spit in the bucket. They wouldn't keep hydrated in the fight. And they were fighting under lights in this fight against Frazier. I think he fought Frazier three times. And I think this was either the first or the second one. And, uh, his trainer kept saying to him, just go one more round. Trust me, go one more round. Just stand up and go one more round. And he stood up and uh, Joe Frazier's uh, trainer threw in the towel in the fight. Because Joe had, um, I think, I think he'd, broke, he'd broken something out of his hand or something anyway. And Ali won, went on to win the fight. And what, what he was trying to say was, when, you, when you've got nothing left, you've got to just go one more round. Just keep going one more round, you know. And... So you know, seeing all this stuff that's going on with with that with Adam and everything, and saying to him, "Look, me, you know, we're in the trenches now. You just got to call me and just get in that church." And it was very hard. I remember, like standing by him and everything on a Sunday, and and seeing, you know, oh, I don't want to come here on a Sunday because, you know, modern day church, unfortunately, for for guys my age, I haven't got a lot in common with most of the people in there. So it's very hard <laughs> to go on a Sunday. You know, you stand there and think, you know, it's full of blue rinses. Most people are over seventy. You know, there's very few people who've got my Thing, you know, so trying to get Adam in there and him saying, John, what, what, what are we doing in here? Like, you know, but I, I, I knew that there was people there like uh, Josh and Stevie and Bill Lewis and Andy Buckless and these type of guys who knew how to help him and, um, you know, get, get him up to go one more round and he'd be all right. And, um, you know, and seeing, uh, seeing how far, how many people he put in his way to save Adam was just shocked me, you know. <sighs> So, uh, sorry. Yeah, it was real. Uh, I was thinking, God, this guy must be special. For uh, sorry, to put so many people in in place to save him, you know. To be to be honest, John, it was like speed bumps. I think you have to put speed bumps in my way. We, me and Kath mm. were going so fast downhill. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I think he was always in control. Looking back now, yeah. it was easy to say. In the in the middle of the battle, it didn't look like there was a couple of times. I I, um, I thought flip it, heck, I, you know what's, what? <laughs> I don't, I don't think you're the only. You're not the only person on this computer yeah. thinking that, John. To be honest, and. Um, and I tell you, I said, uh, I had a bit of a test one myself the other night to the, the Spittle Women's Prayer Group, you know. One of the days uh, I had was having a tough one and I couldn't find him. And uh, the last one, John. Yeah. Then you broke your phone. Um, sorry, yeah, one of the days I couldn't find him. Um, I went up to Moira's. I was telling Stevie about this the other day. And uh, Moira, like Stevie's wife, these are uh, serious women. She, uh, sorry, give us a second. It was wrongly. Um, yeah, she said, uh, right, we'll sort this out now. We'll do our praying right here in the farm. This is nine o'clock Sunday morning. People everywhere. And uh, she said, bow your head. Let's have this. And uh, short, sharp prayer for Adam. Job done. Within about an hour and a half, he was back home. And I thought to myself, God, bloody hell, this woman's got faith, you know. No. And uh, it was just powerful stuff. And... Um, all the all the other boys that were just uh, God put in the way to save the lad. Just uh, yeah, that's, that's what I got. Mm. Yeah, and that's part of the reason. Just to share with what John's saying there is that you know the three of us are together because God had a plan. Mm. And, and you know, we had to experience some things, and we had to step up to the plate when we was called because sometimes like John said, John would say, 
Adam's having a bit of a rough time. He's, a, he's on Necker Island. But why is he phoning me? I've got things I need to do here. But mm. when somebody mm. says to you, your brother needs a hand, he's going through a hard time. He's stuck in a little shed down in his place, fighting with the enemy. Mm. And you've just yeah. got to get there. You've got to mm. just drop everything, pick up your weapons, mm. this, and get down there. And, and you know, it's difficult sometimes to speak to somebody when they're in that battle with the victory in your hand and give him the words, God's got your back. And it, you know, you just got to sit there and talk and just share life. Because we've mm. all been through our battles and we've all been to places that we don't, we don't yeah. really want to talk about anymore because God's taken us out of that. But he's taken us out of that so we can help one another. Mm. And uh, this is part of why the, the men of Christ has come to be because we believe that we need to hold one another up and we need to be able to cry in, one, in front of one of each other. We need to share our hearts with one another and we need to strengthen one another because it's, it's a battle out there. I mean, I, I work in a secular job with probably 99 out of 100 people live in the world. And it really, mm. you get pulled into these things and sometimes and it's hard then when you come away from me to think I should have said this and I should have said that. But I'm learning to speak. I'm learning to speak what God puts on my heart and be honest with people. So, um, you know, I just appreciate um, all you guys because, you know, I, I need, we need each other spiritually to refuel and to top each other up. Um, I don't know if anybody else wanted to say anything, I don't know. There, go ahead, Josh. Did you want to say anything? I don't know if you No, I agree with you there, Steve. You know, I, I think that it's, this, this call just shows exactly what you're talking about here. You know, if we've got the strengths and the ability to speak and comfort others, then um, as we get to know each other better, we'll know how best to do that with each one of us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've learned recently that the Lord does give comfort, and he says that so many times in the Bible, um, and we need to take pause before we speak or before we react and ask him, how, you know, give us, give us strength, Lord. Um, and very often he does, because if we believe that he will, so he does and i think that you know as you're saying this is this is what we need to remind others of we need to try and uh, have some sessions or trying to um find some good passages from the bible to to be able to know that we can put forward to others on a call like this to show that we understand their situation and that uh, perhaps we can share things that we've gone through that will it's showing that we can empathise, and I think that's an important bit. And do we, we, we like people? We, sympathy is one thing, but being able to empathise and understand what somebody is saying um, is, is is much more important, I believe. Yeah, and I think as we move forward, uh, I mean, as part of our heart, as 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 we get to know one another and grow together, we start to see what God's doing in our communities and things like that, and we can focus on moving together to help those situations, because should, we should be the light in the dark places, that we should be going out there and speaking. There's, we know there's hundreds of children who don't have fathers. They're, they don't have a father. They've grown up without fathers, and uh, they don't know, they don't understand what a father is supposed to do or what he's supposed to be. And I think as we grow together, in other areas where there's a need, that we as men should be able to step up to the plate and do it. I mean, you know, if somebody wants to, to string the garden or something like that, if, we, if there's a group of us, then we could just step up to the plate and say, yeah, we could come and do that. We got all the kit, we got all the men. I mean, not everybody's gonna be able to do things at the same time, but there'll be a, enough of us to fulfill that need. So, I mean, that's really what's on our heart is to, 
be the men that God called us to be and, and to serve into our communities and serve one another and love one another and hold one another up. And, uh, you know, just be blessed. And we want to see others to see God through us, through not just through words, but through actions and things like that. See the full thing of God, God's full uh, heart for each and every one of us, because he's got a plan and purpose for each one. That's why we're here. We're not here by accident. We're here because God deemed us to be here at such a time as this, even in this uh, environment we find ourselves in with this COVID-19. We're here because God, God planned us to be here at this time, that we could be a light. And we thank God for one another. So, I don't, um, is that anybody else wanted to think? I sounded a bit too much here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting on my nerves. <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say, I think it's so important that, you know, you look at the figures of men who go to church. If a man goes to church, is it like 90% of the families then will go with him. Mm. You know, if a man doesn't go, it's down to like yeah. no percent. And yet we're sat here, there's like a few of us on here, and there's a lot of people on our group who won't commit to spending time with with men for what what we would call 25 minutes, half an hour. And I think this is what this is why we share and we try and make it normal for for men to get together because you know, I would be lit. I think I honestly would be dead if it hadn't been for Christian men holding me up under God's kind of banner this this last three years. And I think I, you know, and I didn't even want to come to church, but he wrapped me with men and he kept me safe. Um, and he continues to keep me safe. I've got to remember that, you know, I get attacked, but I know I'm, I'm getting stronger. And I think I, there's men within our group within this screen who will need our support and I think we don't men we just don't we just hide and we hide and we hide and we hide until it's too late and that should be our our mission should be making sure that men know we're, we're here and we're sharing so it becomes normal for men to lean on people and my my last thing is when we were away there was a speech uh, a preacher and he said you should all try and aim to have one buddy who you can call at three in the morning or who will pick you up. And all I'm going to say is I've been so fortunate these last three or four years that I reckon I could probably, oh not probably, I know there's four or five, six men who would come and pick me up day or night, all from the churches. And I'm incredibly grateful for what God has done in my life to make my life so safe in that way. I think that's what we should be aiming for, that everyone on this group should have men who will drop and come and save us because we need it we all need it at some point in our lives i mean i'm just unfortunate that i've been there but i know others of us have been there and some of us have yet to be there but we will all go through it and i, I want our armors ready for that that's my last word <laughs> <laughs> and don't call me at three o'clock in the morning that's my last word <laughs> <laughs> my phone's on silent now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, no, Adam, I, th I think you're absolutely right, and that, um, and that actually we can go through really difficult times, and then um, he's disappeared. He's here back now. Is he still there? Are you really gone, Adam? Oh, he's lost his connection. <laughs> I was <laughs> anyway. I was saying it, it, you, you can go through this this huge change in your life, um, but actually. It's, it's important that we maintain those relationships um, for the future and the long term because we never know when we're actually going to to ha have one of those really dark, difficult times that so we need the the support around us. So, um, uh, so it, it's not a, a one-off. And, and once we're sorted, we're sorted for good. Then I know we're we're securing the Lord, but but actually in our walk in this world, then actually we, we do need that. Um, yeah that help uh, regular points and maintaining those relationships between those points is really important. Mm. I, th I think it's rather like a walk, Peter. Uh, you know, with a walk, you go up and downhill. 
you go through forest, you go through a nice lit field. So I think that's quite a good analogy to think that uh, if we are walking together, we can then pull each other out of the dark wood when we need to. Mm. Amen. 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 Yeah. So that'll be our aim over the over the weeks ahead until we probably can get together is to continue with these every Friday. And uh, I have shared it out with a few other people, but it just needs time to get uh, get to people. But if there's anybody you would like to share it with, then we can just share it with them and they can join with us. Um, as I say, John's going to give a, a testimony now next week. And then the week after that will be me. So you know us three. And then... Uh, I'll start contacting uh, different people then to ask them if they would like to share. So thank you all, each and every one for joining with us tonight. Um, be blessed, stay safe, stay strong. Um, I'll just close in prayer before we go, but I just thank you all for being with us tonight and standing with us. And we just pray that we stand together in this fight for the Lord as we move forward. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we've been able to share our hearts today. And Lord, it's good to cry and it's good to get off our chest those things that's in our heart that you've blessed us with, Lord. We thank you for each and every one. We thank you for our friendship and we thank you for the friendships that we're going to build and the relationships, Lord, that we can share our hearts with one another that we can be honest and open that nothing needs to be hidden that all things are visible to you lord and we need to be visible to one another so father over these coming weeks we ask you to guard us and guide us and we just pray for john lord and we pray over this week that you would speak into his heart those things that you would have him reveal to us the things that you've done in his life we thank you for each and every one that's been with us tonight. We thank you for Adam for speaking his heart, Lord, and being open. We thank you for the work that he's doing, the work that you're doing in his life, Lord, and you will continue to do that. We continue to bless him and his family. And we ask you to bless each one of our families, Lord, that you will protect us through this time. And Father, if we can do your bidding, over these days, we ask you to guide us by your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, uh, as we hear today, specifically for these, uh, for the, the vaccines that these people are trying to, to uh, bring into being, Lord. We pray, we pray that your hand would be upon each and every one, and we ask you to bless them, Lord, and we ask you to bring it through speedy. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very Bless much. You yeah. See you same time, same place, same Thank channel. You. All right. God bless. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. God bless, guys. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.